the Tropathy Video assess Assessment. Uh, Guy Glass, student number 0010890. Eight nine zero four T. Subject ADVNPNF thirteen. Naturopathic framework fifteen minute video. Uh, gentlemen, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I can say your name. I Jonathan Kelly. I Blake Glass. On this day, being the twenty third of February, Sunday. On this day, being the twenty third of February, Sunday. Of the year 20, 20, 2014. Of the year 2014. <laughs> agree to the inclusion of my contribution. Agree, agree to the inclusion of my contribution. My contribution. In this DVD slash video. This DVD slash video. DVD slash video. Assessment. Assessment. The nature of which has been explained to me. The nature, the nature of which has been explained, explained to me. I understand that my contribution will be. I understand that my contribution will be viewed by an assessor at the college. Viewed by an assessor at the college for the purpose of assessment and marking. For the purpose of assessment and marking. I am over the age of eighteen. I'm over the age of eighteen. And have agreed to be part of this DVD slash video. And have agreed to be part of this DVD slash video. Assessment on a voluntary basement. Assessment on a voluntary basis. Solitary. I understand that this DVD slash video assessment, or part of it, I understand that this uh, DVD slash video assessment, or part of it, may be used for the purposes of further review, may be used for the purposes of further review, of the college, of the college, or used in moderation, or used in moderation, for validation processes, for validation processes. I understand and agree that my personal details, I understand and agree that my personal details and this DVD video assessment and this video, DVD video assessment will be stored and archived will be stored and archived in accordance with the college policy and procedure in accordance with the college policy and procedure I have read and understood the college privacy policy I have read and understood the college privacy policy <laughs> And procedure. And procedure. Found out. Found out. I'll just quote the website. www.think.edu.au forward slash policies and forms. Uh, www.think.edu.au forward slash policies and forms. <laughs> Since a memory one. test. <laughs> my contribution has. My contribution has. To the best of my knowledge. To the best of my knowledge. knowledge be truthful and honest. Be truthful and honest. I swear to no, I'm joking. Um, I have not deliberately sought to conceal. I have not, del not deliberately sought to, sought to conceal any relevant facts. Any relevant facts from the makers of this DVD slash video. From the makers of this DVD slash video. Or the assessment reviewers. Or the assessment reviewers. So help me God. So help me God. <laughs> okay. That being said, uh, basically I have to ex. Blaine, that I have uh, passed on for your review my fact sheet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on uh, explaining nat naturopathy and uh, I now have to explain the central philosophies of naturopathy and give an example of how they may be applied to address a specific health issue. So basically nat naturopathy uh, embraces holism and mind-body-spirit. So holism, as opposed to modern biomedicine, where you see it, the doctor and he assesses your symptoms and provides you um, a, a product to, to amend that situation. Holism looks at the whole body. So uh, a, a natural therapist will, will look at maybe your work situation, your stress level, uh, how's your diet, um, your exercise. So. Uh, that would cover the mind body spirit part so looking at the mind someone that might be under stress uh, could, could get sick or their immune system might be down and they might catch a cold or um, another problem may, may develop um, some people develop IBS from stress uh, body you know is the body healthy 
Are there spinal problems? Because we all know that the messages go from the brain down the spine well, along the... Uh, I'm sorry to be telling the story. Uh, that signals to the organs. Um, and the spirit side, you know, some people meditate, you get some relaxation time. Um, there is knowledge to suggest that people require ritual, these sorts of things, um, for them to be in their comfort zone mm. you know, as their life running smoothly. So, uh, holism looking at the whole mind, body, spirit, the whole situation that then determine um, the, the cause and effect of the situation. Um, the next part is a comparison of how these philosophies differ from the philosophical tradition of Western medicine. I think we've pretty much covered that where you know you show up to a doctor and you say, yeah, I've got a runny nose and a headache, and he says, well, it looks like you've got the flu. Here's some uh, penicillin or a derivative of such. Um, go away, it'll be over in seven days, which is pretty much the life of a, a cold anyway. Yeah. Um, do you really need to see a doctor at that point? Um, perhaps, you know, making yourself a good, strong curry, uh, eating some garlic or, you know, could, could might um, assist the situation there. Um, <coughs> pardon me. The ways in which you apply uh, nootropic philosophy to your own health practices. Okay, um, I, I like to look at um, Hippocrates for that. So let food by that be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Mm -hmm. So if you're eating healthy stuff, um, you get good vitamins and nutrients and minerals from those sorts of things. Um, rather than having to address the situation later when you you know you haven't looked after yourself, this is also a Taoist philosophy. Um, no, natural naturopic treatments methods include examples of contradictions to treatment, the relationship between therapies and effects of using multiple treatments concurrently. Um, outline how naturopathy works with conventional medicine. Okay, so. Um, we we'll look at, say, uh, um, a bowel infection or inflammation. Um, someone might go to a doctor and they say, you know, they might have um, intestinal bleeding or something like this. Um, the, the doctor would maybe prescribe them penicillin and maybe an anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. to, to get that situation under control. But usually they, they don't look at things like um, diet or light exercise um, where a, a patient looking to improve that situation, might see a, a natural therapist for um, additional support in the fact that you can say, well, you know, um, maybe you should be eating more vegetables, maybe you need to lay off the, the red meat for a while, um, uh, other sort of supportive systems, some herbs or something um, to support that and also Perhaps some meditation or yoga, qigong, nothing too strenuous, obviously, because you don't want to be sort of working out parts that are inflamed. But these that can, that these sorts of things that could increase vitality mm -hmm. and also relaxation would be one method to look at those sorts of things. Um, discuss how the consultation appointment procedure works and include the following, what the client needs to bring to a consultation. I would say any previous medical history, if, if the patient has had a blood test, um, some x-rays, um, those sorts of things should be recorded and looked at. Uh, the content of the consultation, case history, naturopathic assessment technique, techniques used. Okay, so um, looking at those previous things mentioned, um, one might use iridology, um, checking of pulse, saliva, uh, they could even go as far as urea and um, the assessment of the stool, I guess. Um, what would you as a practitioner would document uh, why documentation is necessary and what happens to that documentation? Okay, so getting someone's name and address would be a good start. Um, recording their medical history, um, treatment that you've provided, suggestions that you've done, um, re recording all these maybe on a form that can be filled out or perhaps on a computer and then maybe scanned or uh, archived digitally. That's the way I do it. And uh, maybe a secure password for that section on a computer. Um, 
Clinical, legal and regulatory guidelines, for example, OHS, the Privacy Act, Professional Association Code of Ethics and Conduct. Okay, so um, having the Professional Ethics and Code of Conduct printed out, or a certificate uh, put on the wall, being a member of an association would probably be a really good idea too. So people have a bit of faith in yeah. your expertise. Um, OHS guidelines would be clearly, you know, like if, if someone brings a little kid with them, you know, that you wouldn't have um, sharp knives out or medicines should be stored away in a proper cabinet, um, maybe a sharps disposal um, facility, um, also some safety signs, fire extinguisher, uh, place for everyone to, what's the name of it? Um, a point where they go when the place is burning. <laughs> Access point. Uh, uh, there's a name for it. This is eluding me. Assembly point. Assembly point, yeah. Um, which is typical OHS sort of stuff. Um, addressing the Privacy Act, obviously, uh, anything that the patient or client tells you is conf confidential and you can publish it on Facebook. <laughs> It'd be a silly thing to do. Very, very silly. Um, also, things like um, first aid certificate, um, not getting in too deep if, if there's an area uh, that, it, that the, the consultation goes into that's outside uh, my training, then that would be then referred to a professional in that area. Um, also, adequate uh, public liability insurance, medical insurance, um, obviously not consulting anyone drunk or standing naked reading the Marquis de Sade uh, would probably be against ethics. Um, so the next part is any ethical issues that you may need to consider. Yeah, okay, so yeah, being a member of a professional association and um, acting professionally and not reading the Marquis de Sade naked, a good idea. Um, so that's it guys, um, is there anything that you would like to discuss? Questions? Or... Right, there's a few interesting questions. How interesting do you want it to get? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's got to be assessed, so you've got to keep it professional. Okay. Yeah. So, say um, you have, uh, okay, there's, the, there's a scenario where somebody has gone to a doctor and been given some. Um, mainstream medical treatment, maybe it's a antibiotic or something like that, and they've come to you for um, additional supportive um, naturopathy um, treatment, naturopathic treatment. It's hard to get your phone around that one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, what happens if a situation is the opposite way around? Somebody comes to you first, they haven't seen a doctor. Um, they have some condition where Obviously, not being a doctor, you're not, a, you're not qualified to assess it. But uh, um, and you give them the naturopathic support that they require, but you suspect there may be uh, um, maybe from your experience or something there may be some medical treatment that may be relevant or maybe worth of seeing the doctor. Is it appropriate to to just mention it to them, maybe see a doctor, or to encourage them more actively to see a doctor? Or to refer them to a doctor, or what? What's a level of um, engagement or, or encouragement um, would you consider appropriate to uh, put to them in terms of saying a uh, medical profession, uh, Western medical profession? In terms of something that's life-threatening um, and legal obligations to do so, I think that would be a matter of importance. But if it's um, something that is known in circles, in naturopathic circles, that can be cured by herbal medicine or um, similar aspects or chiropractic or anything that, like that kind of thing, acupuncture. Um, I, I would believe that that would be the best route initially, um, depending on the situation. You know, it could be it could be migraines or it could be a burst appendix. You know, mm -hmm. um, it was really relevant to the situation. Yeah, and sometimes you can't know what it is. You see some symptoms, though. Could you? Yeah, you see some symptoms, but uh, there's um, a bunch of stuff that I haven't learned yet. Um, mm. 
that can indicate what what the actual cause of that particular illness may be. And does does naturopathy deal with treatments or cures? Or what's the wording that, that's used? It's more looking back to the holism point of view to, to look at um, prevention and eradication of the particular problem. Um, I've seen some amazing things and heard some amazing stories um, outside of this, you know, that indicate that it's pretty much everything covered mm -hmm. with um, natural sources. I mean, because naturopathy goes back to Neanderthal days where um, I'm reading a book involved in this course where uh, 60,000 years, don't quote me on the numbers, but, um, you know, the primitive man had been buried with a bunch of sacred herbs that are still used in modern pharmaceuticals. So there's, they've had methods to do these things way before biomedicine sort of became the dominant um, paradigm. Yeah. Would you say um, natural therapy is uh, more of a, a logical uh, and more, more of a, a logical way of um, finding the cause of, of a problem as opposed to basically just just skimming over and and uh, I don't know how to how to word it exactly but fi fixing the problem from the cause as opposed to just patching up something. Yeah, I'm under the impression that you know you see a, a, a modern biomedicine doctor who says, yeah, okay, you've got X, Y, Z wrong with you. Um, these are the solutions, cut, burn, and poison. Um, whereas a natural therapist would look more at the cause of these problems from, from a holistic perspective, you know, including, you know, it could be the work situation, the relationship situation, um, environmental hazards, you know, maybe they work in a chemical plant, they've got a rash from chemical burns or whatever it may be. Um, to look at maybe removing that might be a good idea. Um, you know, it could be marriage counselling or um, changing job roles or career aspects. If you know if that drives you nuts that you're a nervous wreck at the end of the day, and then your system starts to break down because of that, you know, you look at the whole thing. Would you say uh, it would be a bit more time intensive to get to the root cause? Um, not necessarily. I mean, I've seen um, a Chinese herbal medicine doctor fix things that usually takes weeks in hospital for certain people. I personally experienced this, not with my own health, but my partner's health, where um, normally it's three weeks in hospital and then go see the Chinese doctor who fixes it in an hour. So it would vary from case to case, obviously. Yeah, yeah depending, depending on the situation. Yeah.